Hey guys, it's Callie. Today I'm joining other artists from the Creative Arts Collaboration in the hashtag event Trash to Treasure. And I'm going to be showing you how I made these super cool beads out of garbage bags. They're a ton of fun to make. You can embellish them many different ways with added charms, beads, wire. I've done all different colors. They're just addictive. Once you get started, you won't want to stop. If this looks like something you're interested in checking out how I did it, please stick around. I'd be happy to show you. And I would love to see if you do these yourself. I will try very hard to find the video that inspired me. Uh, I saw this a few years ago. And if I do find the video, I will link it below. But there are many ways that you can do these. I've just hung these on a chain right now so I could show them to you. But you could use them as journal dangles, keychain fobs fan pulls, uh, car charms, necklaces, charm bracelets, you know, anything you use beads for. But each one is unique, one of a kind, and made out of recycled materials. So what's better than that? So if this looks like something you're interested in checking out, stick around, get comfy, and I'll show you how I did it. Okay guys, first we're going to need some type of a plastic garbage bag. So these are just from my local Walmart. Any type of these thin garbage bags that we, you know, they multiply in your house. You're going to use some of those. You're going to need a pair of scissors to cut your garbage bags into strips. We're going to be using some wire. And this is 22 gauge wire. I got this at my local dollar store. Um, it's cheap. You know, don't use anything too expensive, but you don't want it too thin. So this is a good gauge that I found. You're going to use some tools for your wire. So I have some round nose pliers. I have some regular pliers and I have a pair of wire cutters. We're going to be using a candle. A tea light works well, whatever you have. This is something I have decoratively in my house. I just throw tea lights in it and you're going to need a lighter to light your candle. Obviously, do this in a well-ventilated area. If you're under 18, you know, do this with parental supervision. Um, just be careful. Don't burn yourself and don't breathe in any toxic fumes. We're going to need a sponge in a dish of water. So literally, I just have a sponge in a dish of water. Make sure it's nice and saturated. Okay. You're going to need some uh, nail polish. I got these at my local dollar store, various places in my travels. You're going to need some, if you choose, some various seed beads or beads of your choice. I have these already strung on wire. That's why they look like that. But I'm just going to snip them and use them individually. I also have a variety of charms, various charms, if you want to further embellish your beads as well as uh, jump rings. I have some jump rings in various sizes. Um, yeah, so, oh, and you're also going to need something to stick your wire in when you make the beads. So I find that um, I just use like a lump of clay and I stick my wire in the clay when they're drying. Okay, so I'll be right back and we're going to get started making some beads. So the first thing we're going to want to do is make our strips. So take your garbage bag and, you know, there's no right way to do this, but I just kind of fold it in half because I want to cut off the little handles here. So 
So I'm just going to do that, take my scissors, and I'm going to cut straight across. It's super easy to cut through. And then you want to do approximately like an inch to an inch and a half strips. They're not going to be even. They're not going to be perfect. Unless you want to measure them out, um, but it's not necessary. So just continue cutting as many strips as you can from your bag. You'll probably get about six or so. Okay. So continue doing that, and you'll get your pile of strips, and then I'll show you the next step. Okay, so now that you've got all your strips cut, the next step is to make the wire framework for the bead. I don't measure this, but I want to say it's probably about six inches or so, okay, depending on how big you want to make your bead, but I just kind of eyeball it. And I'm going to take my wire cutters and just cut a piece. And then you're going to want to make the little loops that we're going to be hanging our jump rings from. Uh, I am not a jewelry maker, so please, if any of you are, I'm just making a little twist at the top here. Um, please bear with me if there's a better way to do this. But I'm just making that little loop. Okay. And then I'm going to see how long I want to make my bead. And let's say this one's going to be this long. I'm going to do the same thing at the bottom. Okay, so I'm just twisting the wire around like maybe twice and if you want to neaten it up you could take your pliers and just kind of all right and we're going to leave this tail here so you have something that's going to look like this all right So make some frames if you want. You can make a bunch of these in advance. And give me one second. We're going to light our candle and start making our bead. Okay, so let's make our bead. You can see I've lit the candle. I have the sponge out here handy. And the first thing I'm going to do is take my little frame here and take one of our strips. And I'm just going to tie a knot. Now, there's probably other ways of doing this, but you know what? This is how we're going to do it. Tie a knot, and it really ties into nothing, okay? And then I'm going to kind of wrap this little piece around here. There's really no right way to do this, you guys. We're going to start wrapping and melting and stopping the heating process all at the same time. Okay, so I've kind of started to wrap my wire with the bag and next I'm gonna and be please be careful you guys we are going to heat this and then right to the water okay and I'm gonna wrap it again and this is the whole process to make the bead we're gonna heat it without trying to burn off our fingers and we're going to stop the heating process with the sponge. So, heat, heat. Again, make sure you're in a well-ventilated area. Okay, so you just keep doing this. And you do it the whole length of the bead. You can do more than one bag strip if you want depending on how thick you want the bead. But I'd like to get some layers in there and then melt it again. Your bag may rip and break and melt. And this can be frustrating. It's not a quick process. Okay, I'm, sh I'm being very haphazard here just to kind of show you. But you can really take your time and get some smooth edges. Make sure you leave your little holes open there. Okay, you guys, so that's it. It's basically going back and forth, wetting it, heating it, smoothing it, wrapping it, 
okay? And I'm going to continue to do this until we're all melted up. And then I take that in there, kind of make sure my fingers are wet. All right. So we're going to do this all the way around, you guys. And it looks really messy and ugly, but I'll get this basic cocoon shape and then just keep working with it. All right. So I'm going to do that and just this is all I'm doing is going back and forth and shaping it with my fingers and when I'm done I'll show you what we get. It looks like a little dried black cocoon. See in one second. So this is what we get guys and uh, doesn't it look like a little cocoon? And again you can make these as long as you want, as fat as you want. You could keep adding layers. Look how dirty my fingers get. This is not a neat project at all but a lot of fun so i'm happy with the way this one looks and the next step is going to be to add some color to this if you like you could leave it black if you want you know me i love the kind of cosmic galaxy looking effect so this is one of my favorite nail polishes uh, it's called holochrome by clean color um, but anything i mean i've used dollar store this is wet and wild from the dollar store. I paid less than a dollar for this. Whatever you want. You could do solid colors. I'm just going to try this one right now because I know I like it. And I'm just going to paint the whole bead. And I use these um, nail polishes specifically for projects and stuff. So, But look how cool that looks. And they take a little while to dry. And you're going to need something to prop these up in while they dry. So you could either get a piece of foam or cork. Or I just happened to have last night laying around uh, a piece of clay, which works really well. And I'll just put it in the clay and we'll let it dry. But look how Look at the glitter on that, you guys. Isn't that beautiful? Okay. So there you have it. And of course, you know I had to make some more just to show you guys. So here's some other ones that I did last night that are now dry. And they're all different. I have some that were just, you know, pink-ish. Can you see these okay? Let's see what sure about the lighting here. Uh, here's some more like galaxy-ish. Here's a gold one. Kind of matches my nail polish. Looks like a little gold nugget. Some purple. And you can see this is only one coat of the paint, but I like how the texture shows through. If you don't like that, keep adding more coats. So I have a bunch. Check out this greenish glittery one, bluish greenish. They look like little space rocks, don't they? Okay, so once you have these all dry, then the next step is going to be uh, embellishing. And I'm going to come back and I'll show you a couple options that I came up with. Okay, guys, now comes the fun part, embellishing them. And, you know, there's a million different things you can do, but I'm just going to show you a couple and first I'll start with the simplest one. So here's just any random bead and we're just going to do a simple wire wrap. So I'm going to hold this with my pliers up here and if you want you can wrap your pliers with tape. Um, I'm not going to bother. And we're just going to wrap the wire. And when you get to the bottom <laughs> you're going to wrap it around the little loop, okay, and whatever's left over there, you're going to snip with your wire snippers. Try to snip with the flat end down, and watch for flying pieces of wire. Now, you can leave it this way, which is pretty and cool, or if you want, just like with a uh, crystal wrapping or wire wrapping of jewelry, you could put a little turn in it and I'm just going to take these pliers and pinch the wire and I'm going to turn it to the left 
and just give it a little, see that? Okay, and you could do it, you know, on the other wire if you want, in the back. Just puts a little added design element in it. So that's one example, okay? The next one we're going to try is, I'll take a, a longer bead, and this one we're going to um, string some seed beads on. So I'll take some of those beads that you guys saw before, and I'm just going to dump them out here. And you could also add beads when you start, uh, before you melt the plastic, when you make your loops, you could put a bead on. Just make sure they're glass or metal and not plastic because they will uh, melt. You know what I mean? You, before you make your twist, put a bead on, and then put a bead on, make another twist, and then wrap your, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, so we take our bead and we're just going to thread on some seed beads or beads of your choice. I don't, you know, you could put these in any particular order if you want, but I'm not going to do so. All right, and you can see that now we're going to do the same thing as we did before, but just with the beads on it. And I'm gonna wrap this before I add more beads just to get a sense of where I'm going. Okay. And you just Keep on going. You could add feathers to these. You could glue other embellishments. Uh, anything you want. Just really let your imagination be your guide. So go all the way down. And wrap it around just like we did with the other ones. Okay. And these beads really stand out on the... Uh, I'm just going to wrap it now just for the sake of the video. But you can go all the way down. I have some that are done. I'll show you at the end. So same thing. When you get to the end, you just twist it around and cut it off. Okay, so that adds a really cool element to it. All right, like I said, I'll show you some finished ones when we're done here. So that's another example. And then the third example that I want to show you is just like the first one. Take, take the wire, wrap it around, and then when I get to the bottom here, I'm going to give it one twist. Okay, and then with this extra wire, instead of just cutting this off, I'm going to just make a little spiral with it. Okay, just using my round nose pliers and turning. I'm just wrapping the wire around the circle that I made to make a spiral. You can make this as big as you want. Okay, and then I'm going to kind of lay it on here, and then just like I did before with the twist, you're going to just pinch it and then twist it, and that'll help it lay flat. So then you have this little spiral. You could hang other embellishments off the top. Like I said, if you want, you could glue a feather here. Okay, so those are just three examples of how... I like to embellish them. And then I'll show you, I made a bunch, you guys. Um, you, oh, and also, I forgot to show, at the end, you know, add whatever charms you want. Just take, you know, a charm. <laughs> Here's a spider, and I put a jump ring on it. And then just attach it. Like I said, I'm not a jewelry maker here, but... I can open a jump ring. Okay, so it's just
just an example if you want to add a little charm to it. All right, so there you have it. And I made a bunch of these last night and strung them on a chain just to, for ease of showing you. Okay, so these are all ones that I've wrapped with beads. Okay, and they all have various charms on them. Fairies and moons and put whatever you want. And you can make these for dangles for anything that you would use charms for. You could make a charm bracelet out of this. You could make a necklace. Make dangles for your journals. Um, make a mobile if you want. So there's those. And then I had some that I did with just the wire wraps and no charms. And they kind of look cool too. Very cool, I think. All right, um, I think I have another one of those spirals. Yeah, right here. Let your imagination be your guide, you guys. Have fun with these. I really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If I can find the original video that inspired me a couple of years ago, I will link it below. Give these a shot. Make sure you check out the other videos from the Creative Arts Collaboration members for the hashtag Trash to Treasure. And uh, show me what you come up with. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you have not yet subscribed. And I'll see you guys very, very soon. Take care.